Hi, John and Charles here, and before we get started, we wanted to post a small correction to our first video. Now, in the first video, we showed this shot and told you that what you were viewing was creamware. That was wrong. In fact, this is Ironstone China, which is different from creamware. Ironstone, though similar, is fired at a more intense heat than creamware. Sorry for any confusion there. Now let's get started. John with Charles here on day five of our trip to the Round Top Antique Show. If you missed an episode, links to all of them are in the description below. Also, if you like videos like this, make sure to hit like and subscribe so we can keep making videos. All the places we visited or mentioned today are also in the description below. Today was the spring opening of the Big Red Barn Antique Show in Round Top, and we were there bright and early, along with what seemed like thousands of others. Now, the Big Red Barn has over 30,000 square feet of air-conditioned space with an additional annex tent and another building, plus another large tented area with live music, a bar, a coffee stand, and food trucks. This is easily an all-day event for an avid collector. And the first booth that we stopped at was Sebasky and Hildreth Antiques. They had a lot of ornaments that were blown glass from Victorian era to mid-century. Also, they had a lot of other Christmas figurines and these mercury glass kugel ornaments from Germany. And I even managed to pick up a 1930s Christmas book, which you'll see uh, at the end of this video. We also saw some beautiful sketches for stained glass windows and then went over to this crystal booth. Franz Helwig, he was a dealer in American Brilliant Crystal and Cut Glass. And he is from Louisiana, actually, from Terrytown. We talked to him for quite a long time. He had quite a collection going. Now, here's one of the pieces that you really liked. Yes, this was one of the Empress Cut uh, platters. Um, he nor I did not know exactly who the artist was, but it was very breathtaking. Absolutely gorgeous. And he had so much on display. And coming up here, you'll see it here, but then in this next shot, this is another piece that you really liked. This Arabian two cut glass tray by O.F. Eggington and Company. I, it was a showstopper. And he actually had it for a great deal. Right, that glass, that piece goes for normally what, well over $24,000? Yes. This was a two-piece punch bowl in leader pattern by Higgins, and he actually had it for less than $2,000. I saw this little bear and fell in love with him, and I had seen him on shows before, and he is stuffed with hay. Neat. We also stopped by Michael Sanderson's booth, and he had some crystal and some other vintage items, including some silverware, and we ended up picking up some salt cellars from Mr. Sanderson at his booth here at Red Barn. This particular booth had the largest amount of flow blue I have seen so far. Huge collection. And this is Mary with UK Treasures, and she also has a section in the Whistle Stop Antiques yes. and Giddings. Yes, and she was the one who corrected us on the uh, creamware that we had mispronounced. And then we stopped by Stephen Farr's booth from Dallas, Texas, and I decided to pick up a beautiful quilt. And they had a lot of things on order, some quilts, but also, as you can see, a lot of other vintage items. Uh, these are just some other booths that we um, passed by and saw some interesting things. Didn't pick up any of this. Uh, this is another thing that I really thought was really cool. Now, this is millstones and syrup kettles that have been turned into fountains, and they make these custom. Um, and then in one of the annex tents, this was the European uh, annex, right? Yes, the European uh, antiques. Yes, and this was in its own separate place. Uh, on site, and as you can see, there are a lot of beautiful European antiques in here. A lot of things to see. As a, again, this is this is a place that you could spend an entire day and still not really see everything. And then we headed back down, like we said we would, to the Round Top Antique Festival uh, on Texas 237. And again, we parked at the Gen at Warrington and picked up a golf cart rental from Leaning Tree Golf Cart Rentals. Very friendly people, their information is in the description. As you can see, this place has so much to see. 
And it was great weather today. I mean, nothing yes, didn't get over 70 wonderful. degrees. Now, the whole festival area is set up into different sections. So this is like the Zap Hall campus was one of the sections, and then another section is called the Rank Hall section. So they're broken up into different sections, but each one of these goes way back on the campus with huge numbers of tents and vendors. Look at the stuff set up here that they have. There's just anything you can think of, they have it. I saw rugs, I saw vintage items, I saw uh, newer items out there. We saw uh, anything you can think of, huge doors, furniture. This place is some place to get lost in, and you can spend more than one day here. And it's free, it's open to the public. You will probably have to pay for parking, but other than that, there's lots of food, lots of things to do and see here. We really had fun uh, going through this, and uh, if we do come back, I'd like to go here again. Now, this is set up um, every year for all three uh, times that they do this, which is in the uh, fall and in the winter and in the spring. So hopefully we can get back uh, for the fall. And again, you can see some of the items that were, that were out here, just so much uh, variety. And after driving around for a while, I actually got lost a few times and uh, did not realize that it actually went back as far as it did. Um, and I was actually impressed over some of the places that had all the silverware and the vintage Christmas areas that uh, looking from the outside of the tents, you wouldn't expect to have seen these things in these tents, but they are hiding everywhere in this place. Um, this is one of my favorite things was oh, the love this. stand yeah. of the Lance jars. And here's, here's another uh, section where this lady had these big bowls full of old blown glass ornaments. Now this place for all of my Christmas collectors, this lady, by the time I got there, had sold over 250 blow molds and she had at least 150 left. Her entire tent is full of Christmas. Anything you could possibly think of, trees, figurines. Here's, here's one of her tables of figurines. Uh, she also had three full size tables of nothing but these Christmas ornaments. And the majority of them were your shiny brights. I've never seen a massive collection of these. And a lot of them actually were all complete boxes of them. We had a great day on day five of our trip out here at Round Top, Texas. This is what we brought home today. Now it's not as much as we normally take home, but it's no less exciting. And one of the first things that I picked up today, as I mentioned in the video, was this beautiful old Christmas book. It just says Merry Christmas to you on it. It is from 1936, and it just is a bunch of Christmas stories, one after the other in this book. It's very old and it would look perfect as Christmas decor, but also as a book to read with cozy stories during the holiday. I actually love this piece. And next was a set of six Westmoreland cut crystal salt cellars that we found. We have been trying to find a set of six that were not damaged and we finally found them. And this was the set that we picked up from Michael Sanderson uh, that we spoke about in the video. They're beautiful and they'll go well with uh, just about everything, including our China set. Third thing we bought today was this ring pattern quilt. Uh, John and I have been trying to find a quilt that we equally liked and we finally found one, and this one came from... Stephen Farr out of Dallas, Texas. It was his booth that we showed you earlier in the video. And this quilt is actually in very good condition. Yes, there are no rips, tears. There's a few little discolorations from some of the pieces that were sawn into it where it bled just a little bit. But other than that, perfect condition. And our fourth and final find of the day was kind of a surprise because we made an unexpected stop on our way home briefly at La Bahia. 
I went in while John stayed in the vehicle and I went to John Wanant's booth and he just so happened to have this Limoges porcelain trinket box. And I thought it would be a nice surprise when I got back to the car, because this was for John. Yes, and it features a goat and a little satyr on it. And it is in blue and white. This was a nice surprise and I was glad that we got it. So we got a nice haul today, not quite as big as we normally get. But if you like this video, as usual, please remember to like and subscribe. And tomorrow is our last day in town, day six. So stick around for that, and we'll be posting that tomorrow. Bye.